It is 6.04. I am calling the July 9th, 2024 regular governing board meeting for CV uh, Fiber should, to order. Should we start the recording? Yes. If it yes, I should <laughs> start recording before I say that. Thank you. Uh, Sybil, are you going to do I'm that? I'm here, and I could, but oh. Chuck said he was doing it, so I didn't know if you wanted okay, me to well, do it. Okay, well, all right. I can, I can do it. You want me to go Chuck, ahead? Chuck, please do it. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, starting over. It is still 6.04 p.m. according to my clock on my computer. I am calling the July 9th, 2024 regular governing board meeting for CV Fiber to order. Do I have any additions or changes to the agenda? Not seeing any, do I have any public comment? Uh, yeah, actually, I'd like to just report that I had a, uh, a meeting with the Plainfield Select Board. Uh, they wanted me to show up and give a brief update about uh, what CB Fiber is doing, how things are going. Um, so I ran down on that and I described the merger and uh, that we're pursuing it and doing all of our appropriate uh, due diligence. Okay. Anybody else? All right. Uh, prior meeting minutes. Do I have a motion for the prior meeting minutes? I uh, motion to approve the June 11th, 2024 meeting minutes as drafted with a correction by John Morris. Uh, I, the, the minutes incorrectly stated that we are installing 40 per week, and uh, I believe the correct number is 40 per month. Yes. Do I have a second? Second. Okay, motion, motion made by Jeremy Matt, seconded by R.D. Eno. Do I have any objections to the motion? Any abstentions from the motion? All right, the motion passes. Um, I am looking for a treasurer's report now. Okay, I'm that's on me. The road. Oh. Oh. Yeah, go ahead, Bonnie. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, so the reports for May have been submitted to Lori Beth, and she's reviewed them and uh, sent her approval via email. So I'm just going to go over some highlights for the end of May. Uh, at the end of May, we have $3.5 million in cash. Um, we had put in a requisition for 35% of the bead um, grant for uh, the application, loan application, uh, and the 863000 from the VCBB match. Um, those were outstanding at the end of May, but we did receive both June 11th, so we now have those. Um, we utilized about 158,000 of our construction grant in May uh, for a total of year to date of 1.957 million, leaving about 2.7 million as advanced grants to be used in the future. We um, had 59 installs in the month of May. Um, and have allocated 471000 to four different towns of the ARPA grant money for those installations. So we had 59 in May, but we have a total at the end of May of 314. And actually at the end of June, we have another 39 for a total of 353. So we've received the 863000 just kind of as preliminary to June from VCBB, and we are restricting the funds um, until we actually use them so that we're not counting them in our usable cash. So we're still in a good cash position. We're still in line with the projections that we have talked about over the past several months. Thank you, Bonnie. Lori Beth, do you have anything you want to add to that? Um, no, I don't. I did look over, as she said, and approved the May one, but we don't have June yet. Um, I've seen okay. a little bit of some of what's gone through for May, but I mean for June, but uh, nothing to, to report on yet. Okay. Thank you, Lorba. Sure. Anything else for the Treasurer's report? All right. 
or do you go ahead? Yes. Are are these reports available online? Um, they go in front of the finance committee, and once they're presented at the finance committee, they should be uploaded online. Is that correct, David? They've been put online for May. Do you know? David, you're muted. They are on the shared drive for those that have access to the shared drive. David, what is the chair drive? The share, the share drive, the Dark, the no, uh, CD fiber share drive. Okay. I don't think that we make those public. I don't think that we publish those to our website, but they are available to those that have access to the share drive. Okay. The reason I ask is that it's difficult for me to follow an oral report of this complexity. And it would be helpful to have it um, have text. So I'll just speak to that. We have a uh, report, a printed report that goes to the finance committee and, and is in full with that summary in the shared drive by month. Thank you. Yep. So RD, are you asking that a link be sent or do you think you can find it? Um, let me try and find it. Uh, sorry. Let me try and find it first. Okay. And if I need the link, I'll let you know. Okie dokie. All right. Moving on to construction materials and warehousing update. Go ahead. Janiel. I'll start. I'll start. And then I'll ask if Lucas wants to add anything to it. Um, we are uh, we are working on gig work for opening up our final CLO3 um, distribution area, and what that means is cleanups, testing of the testing of the uh, network, and getting ready to go live in our our last construction area for the season. We expect that it will likely be by the end of this month, but we don't know for sure, so we're not advertising that um, in abundance of caution. Um, but we were in good shape to continue. We're, we're in close communications with the construction crews and it's looking positive to open up um, CLO3 shortly. Um, we, as far as warehousing goes, we've been working with NEK Broadband and they have their eyes on and boots on the ground at the Montpelier warehouse. They've hired additional staff to uh, be there present at the warehouse and the, the materials are, are, um, are being well cared for. They are in, in some instances being um, transferred to NEK build so that they can be utilized, but still being kept track of since we have not completed the final merger. So they're still considered um, the CV fiber assets and all of that tracking is taking place. Uh, we are going through the materials for um, Buy American compliance for use in the bead process. That's an ongoing um, analysis for all of the materials in the warehouse. Do you want to add anything to materials or construction, Lucas? No, I think you kind of nailed it there. Not much else. Okay, then we'll go on to operations update. So the number of connections we have as of today is 371 with 10 more in the queue. So our numbers, the projected numbers under the budget are still in line with um, what we expected. So we're, we're going at about 40 per month and expect to continue at that rate. We were able to get ahead of some of the rotting, some of the rotting that was holding us back. And um, we are looking at continued installations um, at that rate, uh, most likely through the end of the year. It would it, We have enough in the queue to last us that long. So we're gonna continue with the, with the um, installations. We have um, weekly calls with Waitsfield and they have their their crews are working diligently so i don't anticipate any sort of reduction in the installation rate and we have had extremely happy customers so they're doing things right uh, we've gotten a lot of positive feedback from the 
from the uh, customers on how the installations are happening. Lucas, do you want to add anything to the operations update? Uh, no, same. Thank you. You covered everything. So I, I have a question about operations on the, um, how are we doing on conduit installs and how is, how are those things going? So, I mean, that continues to be sort of a sore point, depending on the case-by-case the -case basis. We're seeing more and more folks pushing back, wanting aerial drops, some of which are um, doable and some of which are not. So it's, you know, we're, we're taking it case-by-case -case right now. Okay. Go ahead, Olivia. Um, to address that, I am working with Waitsfield to put together a conduit survey. So when their CSRs, customer service reps, actually call to get more infor information regarding the status of conduit that's needed, um, a lot of it goes into a note section, which is not filterable. So my goal is to send out an email to all the folks that ask about sources and conduit quotes. CV fiber and how big of a consideration conduit costs are. My goal in sending that survey out is to essentially get a better assessment, a better feel of what the real sticking points are and how we can address those on a more granular level. So that's my goal by the end of this month. Thank you, Olivia. RD, go ahead. Why do so many people prefer aerial drops to conduits? Cost. Oh, expensive. Cost. Money. Okay. Thank yeah. you. It's plus faster install because if you got to get somebody out to put the conduit in at your house, good luck with that. So, is this, yeah. does this also pertain to premises that already have conduits? If they don't have adequate conduit and they have to do something with it, then yeah, go ahead, Henry. Um, just a refresher, what's our current policy on um, conduit uh, for customers? Are, are we paying for it? Are they paying for it? What? Yeah, okay, just so everyone knows, because there's been a lot of discussions about us covering that cost. And in this discussion, I think that's useful to remember. We currently have a policy that a customer is responsible for paying for the conduit and for uh, arranging for the conduit. Thank you. Are there any other, sorry, any other operations questions? Okay, marketing update, Olivia. Uh, in the past month, we had one major event at the Worcester Town Hall. Uh, it was very well attended. Um, I actually want to uh, take a nod to say thank you to Alan for helping um, and to all of our delegates who uh, who actually attended. Uh, Alan, do you want to give any um, you know feedback comments from your perspective? Yeah, I mean, it, it worked out great. The food was great. There was a lot of conversation both before uh, and after the the uh, the the planned um, program was was done. Um, so I think the lesson that I learned from this is there are still a lot of people with a lot of questions, and it takes a little while for them to get shaken a bit and realize, yeah, you can ask that question. That's a good question. Other people have been asking that. So I think it was good to have a lot of people with a lot of questions all in the same place because they realize that nobody knows perfectly how some of this stuff works. And there, there are a lot of questions, particularly around things like conduits and aerial connections and so forth. So the presence was great. Uh, people were really friendly. Um, we had a couple of legislators come there uh, to attend, and that was a uh, that was really good. So, Olivia, congratulations for pulling the whole thing together. I, these things look easy when they're happening, but they're not. I know that. <laughs> um, and it, it it really worked well. So, congratulations. Oh, good. Um, thanks, Alan. 
Um, I also wanted to add that um, that our website uh, security um, has been just in general, uh, cybersecurity is really important to us. And it was something that I've wanted to do for a while. So we actually had an audit done on the WordPress section. So what you currently see on cbfiber.net, um, it, uh, it, it comes together through a platform called WordPress. And we recently had an audit uh, and those audit results just came back. Um, with the exception of two very minor administrative cleanup things, which have already been addressed, it came back really clean. So that's really good for us. Um, moving forward, um, in case our website does change, uh, we have some lessons learned in terms of doing things maybe manually instead of doing automatic updates. Um, code is really good um, for doing automatic updates, but it's always better to have a human checking on the background just to make sure nothing breaks, essentially. Um, so that was one of the things. The other thing is also, as people come and go, making sure our user access to the back end of our site is up to date. So those are the two things that we've um, taken as lessons learned moving forward. Um, in terms of the preliminary merger and the latest staff report, Henry? No, I meant to just say excellent. I can't believe we've done this. We've come a long way. I'm really glad you um, uh, had that done and um, that we had positive results. Me too. <laughs> uh, doing an audit is always scary, but when, when the results come back clean, um, it's really nice to hear. Um, the latest, um, so we've been working on media coverage for the preliminary merger. The latest staff report has the latest uh, mention of the merger from Times Argus. Uh, now moving forward, we're now getting actually into the public notice hearing phase for media coverage. Uh, by statute, S-199 requires publication in uh, a local newspaper. So I am working with Times Argus to get that published by Friday. Antonia is working with publications in the NEK region um, to have that published in their region. Uh, in addition to that, we'll be sending notices to our town clerks by Friday uh, and also posting on Front Porch Forum. So that should pretty much cover um, everybody <laughs> um, in the widest gamut of audiences um, to give adequate notice for both virtual and in-person options for our July 16th hearing at 6 p.m. And I'll be sure to send that to this governing board as well. Okay. Janelle, do you have anything you want to add or are you happy with that? We're happy, happy with that. With that. Happy you. with that. Um, that was All right. Committee v. CUDA board appointment. Okay. First is that Jeremy Matt has stepped up to be the v. CUDA alternate. But I do we need, we need to vote on that, right? Did we decide? We voted we previously. Vote we voted previously for that role. Okay. All right, so we need to have a vote on that. Is there anybody else who is willing to step up to be CV Fiber's VCUDA alternate? Your responsibility will be attending VCUDA member meetings and voting when Janiel is not available. This will probably that's, be for about a month. That's every other Tuesday at 9 a.m. Yeah. Um, for one hour. So I guess I have to open the floor to nominations. Alan's glaring at me. <laughs> uh, okay, I'm not seeing any other nominations. Oh, Tom Fisher, go well, ahead. I wasn't sure if Jeremy had been nominated yet officially, so. Yeah, say, not officially. Okay. Okay. All right, Jeremy's been Jeremy nominated. Yeah. I'm not. No one else any, wants to be nominated. <laughs> <laughs> nobody else is. Nobody else has been nominated, so I'm closing nominations. And I think I can do, do, do I have to, since we don't have any other nominations, we've got a single candidate. Do we even need to vote? Do we have to vote? Alan's nodding. Alan says we have to vote. Alan, tell me how to do it. You can have the, have the chair cast one vote for the uh, lone candidate. <clears throat> okay, I'm gonna cast a vote for the lone candidate. And Jeremy, Matt, you are our VCUDA alternate. Congratulations. Yay. All thank right. you, Jeremy. Yes, thank you, Jeremy. It's necessary. Um, board appointments. We have, do we have our new board member here? Tom? Tom, I don't see Tom. Is Tom here? I don't see him. Okay. 
Do we ever actually get the official letter? Do we need an official letter or is the email sufficient? Anybody know? I am checking my inbox now, but I believe from my recollection, we did receive the official letter from a select board. Okay. All right. So in that case, I am going to make a motion. I'm going to make a motion. I move that the board accept Tom Davis as the delegate for the town of Northfield. Second. Motion made by Siobhan Paracone, seconded by Tom Fisher. Do I have anyone opposed? Jeremy, go ahead. I'm just, do we, I mean, I, I don't think that we vote on this because I don't think we have on anyone else. Yes, we have. You know, like, yes. I wasn't, I don't think I was voted on. I, I've never, every, every time anyone new has showed up, it's just like, hey, this, these people were appointed. Really? I also, yeah. Yeah. yeah I'll, I'll, I thought I'll we voted to Jeremy. accept them. I'll second what Jeremy is saying. Okay. All right, then. Fine. Be that way. See if I care. <laughs> I, mean, I, I was, here, I was but... <laughs> ready to make Alan happy. But no, no, that's fine. Fine. If Alan no, yells I, at me later. No, I'm not going to yell at you because we don't have the ability to to fire a, right. a, a, a person and we don't have a, okay. the ability to hire him. It's the, it's Great. The, uh, awesome. No, I was confusing it with the committee boards. things. <laughs> Yeah. Right. I was confusing it with the committee approvals because committees on the same line. That's what I, I'm, I'm sticking with that story. Okay, committees. So committees is the next thing. Oh, my God. It's it's because Krista and Nick are here. I'm like really nervous and I've got great performance anxiety now and I'm, I'm just sounding like a complete gibbering fool. And don't you dare say what's new. Anyway. So committees, I can't remember what we were going to say about the committees. I think uh, we were just notifying you that the finance committee has a set of procedures uh, to for managing the finances and a, and a sequence of steps it needs to go through and that that's available if you want to review it. They've adopted these procedures. And I don't think there's anything we have to do with that. So go ahead, Janelle. Um, agreed on the finance uh, procedures, but we have John Reed as the operations and planning chair. Yes, that one we do have to vote on and accept. Okay. <sighs> John yeah. Reed got voted as chair of the operations and planning committee by the committee, and we need a motion to accept him as the chair. Do I have a motion? Motion to approve John Reed as the chair of the uh, operations and planning committee. Second. Second. Okay. Motion made by Jeremy Matt, seconded by Chuck Burt. Tom, you were going to say something? You're going to stop me again? Okay. <laughs> All right. Do I have any objections to the motion for accepting John Reed as the chair of the operations and planning committee? And Chris is sitting here thinking, this is why we don't have committees. <laughs> I don't hear any objections. Do I hear any abstentions? Are there any abstentions? No abstentions. Then John Reed, congrats. Yeah, your congratulations. You are the chair of the of the committee. <laughs> like we do, we do, we do have committee. Said it we do have yeah. probably yeah. the shortest serving chair, committee chair. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right, uh, do you know? Are there any other committee things? I just put committee down, and then I didn't write any notes on what all the committee things were, and. So you're that's my brain. All, that's all I have on my notes too. Okay, great, perfect. Um, we did the acknowledgement of the service event. I went to the event uh, in Worcester and I had a good time and it was really nice to see uh, Jeremy and, no, Jerry. Dear God, it's the heat. Now I'm blaming the heat. Jerry, David and Linda again and uh, to, give them flowers and, and all those things. And yeah, it was really nice. It was nice. It's nice to be in the same place physically sometimes. And so I was, I was really uh, glad to see y'all there that I saw there. And if, if in the future, if we have events, if you can make time, it, they're more fun than they seem like they're going to be. And uh, uh, Waits Field was great fielding questions and uh, explaining how stuff worked and, so I was I was real happy with it. 
So now we are to the merger update and vote. Um, does anybody have anything in particular they want to talk about before we go into this? Just want to give you a chance to say stuff before we dive into this. I'm not seeing anything. All right. Um, Janiel, why don't you go ahead and give us an update of every of where we're at and then we can discuss if we need to go ask questions or go into executive session to discuss things in more detail. Sure. So I sent around a deck that I can present, but where we are now with the merger is we will have a vote tonight to continue with the merger and NEK Broadband will have a vote on Thursday to continue with the merger, basically the same the same um, paralleled language to proceed with the merger. This is, it's important to, uh, to get this, uh, to get this vote now, even though the final merger is in August, because by August, it, basically it's too late to be to be frank about it because we we really need to start getting our bead applications together as a merged entity, and we have been working as a merged entity in a lot of ways since June 1st, since the first board vote, we started integrating staff and doing other collaborative efforts. And we've been putting a lot of effort into the merger itself. So that, that tonight is a very important vote. So tonight is an important vote. We, we need to hear any concerns now, if there are any, um, and we expect to have a vote this evening. So I can proceed with, uh, if, if there are any questions now, I can answer any basic questions about where we are, or I can go into a, a deck. Tom Fisher. Just wanted to quickly restate and make sure I've got this correct. Um, if we vote one way now and vote a different way in August, we will be shooting ourselves in the foot. Is that accurate? Yeah. So I just want to make sure everybody's aware it, of that. Like this is kind of the yeah, off it's, ramp here. It, it's not that we don't have another vote coming in August, but we will be seriously messing up our organization if we vote one way tonight, spend a month pursuing something, and then have to backpedal a month's worth of time that we won't have. So just wanted to make that clear for everybody here. Yeah. And I just I want to oh sorry uh, David Lawrence David Lawrence yeah. go ahead. Yeah, I'd just like to request that uh, before we do something crazy, like name ourselves East Rise or something, that we actually discuss <laughs> what an appropriate name is. Okay, so, I'm, I'm so that is... I'm half kidding, that but is, half serious about that. <laughs> so... That is under discussion. Chuck, go ahead. Yeah, uh, David, there, there is a branding working group that is uh, starting the conversation. Admittedly, it's it's early, um, but yes, we are we are sensitive to that. Um, and of course, any any sort of shift in brand is something that would you know likely go in front of uh, uh, at the very least the executive committee, if not the full merged board at some point in time. Olivia. Yeah, I just want to echo that. So I am spearheading the branding uh, initiative on both fronts um, in conjunction with uh, with Tonya at NEK. So we do have a branding working group. Uh, we do have a couple of concepts. Everything is being filtered through multiple levels of perspectives. Um, I've done a number of branding projects before. I've seen a lot of pitfalls with branding, so I can assure you are in good hands. Um, but we do have a process internally, so we'll be sure We'll be sure to share when the time, when and if the time comes. And Krista, go ahead. Yeah, I just wanted to identify that um, branding is uh, an item that is in the proposed bylaws as a governing board um, uh, piece. Anybody else have any questions or I'm not I'm not sure how far to dive. Go ahead, RD. Um, um, Krista, what do you mean by a governing board piece? Sorry, piece was a bad word, but it's a governing it's 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 in the purview of the governing board rather than the executive committee. 
Mm-hmm. Okay, thank you. So there are five main issues that are reserved to the governing board, um, whereas a lot of um, a lot more um, of the supervision and oversight uh, is part of the executive committee. When you have seventy-one plus all the alternates, um, it gets unwieldy to to do it to do everything at a governing board level. But there are some fundamental things that should always be kept with the governing board. And may I um, follow up by asking you, Olivia, what are the complexities of branding? I'm not sure I understand why um, why this should be a difficult issue. Can you explain that? Uh, I'll try to keep it as brief as possible. Um, so branding a company, um, you need to make sure your name is scalable with business growth um, so that, that your name doesn't uh, place any parameters based on any potential growth initiatives on the business front. You want to make sure that there's no conflicting um, brand identities already in the public domain. Um, so making sure that you cross-reference those, making sure that your brand is certain and recognizable from a marketing front. And also, you know, logistically speaking, there's acronyms, there's trademarks, there's Secretary of State uh, cross-references, there's social media handles, and there's domains for websites that we have to cross-reference before we end up with a short list of names. Once the final name is decided, then you go into the, 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 the pretty part of logo design, of website design, collateral, all that good stuff. Um, and so the name was the first and probably the most important piece of that puzzle. Thank you. This is where I came in years ago. Yeah. I came in when, C, when, when CB Fiber was rebranding itself and creating a new logo. So, yeah. Thank you, Olivia. Chuck Burt, go ahead. Yeah, just, just to add a little bit of additional commentary to what Olivia put forward. Um, so in, in brand, really the way to think about it is your brand is what your community and customers are going to think and feel about you as a company. And a thing like a logo is just one small element of the broader way that you intentionally craft that perception of you uh, uh, as an organization, um, because you will have a brand no matter what. And if you're not careful about crafting that, then the, it can go into directions you don't want it to go. Um, and so you just have to be really thoughtful about the approach of how you craft that brand such that it's going toward the direction you want to pe people to have that internal perception. What does somebody think when they think NUCO you know, I guess Northeast Central Vermont CUD is kind of our working title right now. Uh, so I'll just use that in place of something else. But, you know, what 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 do people think when they think CB fiber or NEK broadband or or what have you? Um, so, you know, and, and then you have the, the physical manifestation of all of that, which, again, is the logos, the website designs, the color palettes, the font selections, all, all those sort of things that are helped to craft or uh, are used to help craft that uh, perception of you as an organization. All right, I have no other hands. So um, I guess my next question is how deep do you guys want to go or do you want to go for a vote? Do you have information that you haven't had? Jeremy, Matt, go ahead. Um, I mean, speaking for myself, I've heard a lot of reasons why the merger is a really, is, is a good idea um, and I guess I would mostly be interested in hearing if there's any new information about uh, why it might not be uh, the way to go. Because I think that, you know, I, I'm for it based on the information that I've heard to date. Uh, Christopher Shank, go ahead. I'm going to go on a little bit with what um, I, I still have. Concerns. I mean, full disclosure, I intend to vote uh, in favor today, but I have I have concerns about uh, culture um, and, I don't know, employee benefits, I guess you could say, um, both real and, and, you know, fringe and all of that kind of stuff. Um, and I, I feel like 
I feel like CV fiber has, um, has been kind of pushed aside a little bit in some of those conversations. Um, and so I, if those conversations keep going the way that they're going, then I, I might vote no in August. Um, I just wanted to, to voice that. Uh, I, I feel like there were others that had similar concerns, but I just wanted to say that uh, before we vote today. Okay. Christopher, I'm hoping that I can get Krista to address some of those concerns. Um, I'm gonna go to Ted and then Alan and then Krista, I'm gonna ask you to talk. So Ted, go ahead. Yeah, and I am not, can't speak to some of the concerns around personnel and how the two CDs might merge together. Um, I just wanted to, to raise that my neighbor reached out to me to say that Consolidated was building fiber in my, or was talking and promising to people that they would be here too. And I think in the world of choices for many folks and the way bead might shake out, it, it may not be, right? Like if we are smaller discrete entities it may not be us in certain places. It may be consolidated. And that to me is a worst outcome um, because even at a larger scale, which may lose some culture, it may lose some connection to our community, um, it is still better and more representative than a consolidated is. Um, so wanted to, to really, I thought the timing was interested, interesting in hearing that Consolidate is going to go for a lot of bead funding. And I think by having a joint entity together in that application, um, it, it's, it, it, to me, it's a zero sum game. And so any way we can make ourselves stronger, um, it, it's just the way we have to go and, and work out some of the issues around the logistics of doing so um, more concretely. Um, but yeah, ultimately wanted to, to share my support and, and more recently in how it was bolstered. Thank you, Ted. Go ahead, Alan. So there's a bit of Christopher in me. There's a, there's a bit of Ted in me. But the one thing you did that guaranteed a response, I'm sure you, you're probably not going to be too interested in hearing, is I actually read everything you sent out. And I made a list of uh, questions and, and comments. I have nine things that I've sorted things down to that at some point I'd like to bring up without sounding too tedious. I am still of the opinion that we don't have much of an option about what we have to do here if we want to try to continue to achieve the mission we set out to do in 2018. Um, so I, I, I'm, not, I'm not thinking in my mind that I, that I would vote no, um, but there are some things about about how things are going and some of the details of how things are expressed in writing that I think are important and I wanted to bring up. Okay, thank you, Alan. Um, are the things that you want to bring up something that can be said in public meeting? Yeah, I think so. Uh, uh, to my mind, they can be and should be. I. There's nothing in there's nothing scurrilous or anything like that in it. It's just it's just more. I don't want to say policy. That has <laughs> with some people they don't want to hear about policy, but <clears throat> I just want to make sure that some of the ways we're characterizing stuff are understood by everybody and accepted, uh, because I think that is that that's important. I think we've been trying to understand some things as not being what they really are going to become. And I think we should realize what they are and we should not tell people there's something else uh, if they were to ask us what they are. Okay, I said I was gonna let Krista talk to address some of the things that have come up thus far. RD, is your comment pertinent to what we've covered or is it new ground? Um, no, it's pertinent, I think, to Alan's remarks. I'm, um, uh, um, uh, curious as to what your nine points are, and I would be grateful to hear them before we took a vote. Oh, we're absolutely going to hear Alan's points. We're absolutely okay. going to hear Alan's points. Uh, and and at, one po at what point will we hear Alan's points? <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm going to let Krista just, talk. I'm happy to do them yeah. first. I mean, I'm happy to, you know. Yeah. Okay, Alan, let's do let's do your nine points, and we'll put Krista on the on the uh, the little light on Krista. 
So, Alan, why don't you go ahead with your questions? You want me to go ahead with my questions, my nine points? Yes, please. Okay. So if you look at the preliminary merger plan document on page one, the third paragraph, there's a sentence that says, <clears throat> under this plan and in compliance with the process set forth below, NEK and C CVF will merge into one corporate entity and NEK will be the surviving entity. When I first read that, it felt like a, it felt like a dagger to the heart uh, because I don't think of CV fiber uh, no longer surviving, and yet that's exactly what this sentence says. So if you continue on, as I, as I, I promised I, I did, if you look at the merger document um, uh, it, on page three, you would read that uh, the dropping of CV fiber entity in favor of the continuation of NEK is explained pretty succinctly, quote, on page three of the merger agreement document. Due to the magnitude of grants and uh, loans, the legal name of the merged CUD shall be NEK Community Broadband. So I think it's important for us to accept that we've done a lot, but other things we haven't uh, succeeded at to the, to the uh, degree we should have, and that's going to be recognized, at least in a corporate sense, uh, a very, very, clearly that we have we have not been able to do what others have been able to do and we are uh, we are pairing with somebody else because because we need help and I think that there's nothing shameful about that I think any of the CUDs working at this point in time in Vermont are doing an, an, an amazing job of trying to do something that governments, and private companies have tried to do for numerous years, and we've gotten much closer than any of them, them ever have. So I don't feel embarrassed or ashamed about the fact that the entity that we started six years ago and have been pretty proud about is no longer in a corporate sense going to exist. Um, I, just, I, I just wanted people to know that I accept that and I hope we all can accept that. Uh, Thank you, Alan. Okay, uh, I'll keep going unless somebody has other comments, but- Jeremy, um, Jeremy, Matt's got his hand up. Jeremy, can you be quick? Yeah, super quick. Um, I don't think it's because we failed that CV Fiber isn't continuing. It's because of the nature of NEK's businesses and the number of grants that they have. It, it's more of the style of grant. If we were the entity that had more grants, I think that CV Fiber would continue. It's it's because it's what's best for the merged organization as a whole, not because you know CV Fiber failed. Um, because I also think that we bring a lot to NEK. You know, um, we're certainly getting a lot of value from NEK, but we're also providing a lot of value to NEK. Thank you, Jeremy. Go ahead, Alan. Okay, so on page four of the preliminary plan. Um, I, I would like somebody to explain why under uh, section 1.9.2 CV fiber ARPA funds, it's stated that any K, uh, quote, any K broadband will be involved in the decision of the number and location of miles CV fiber will construct in 2024. And this, this is, this involvement goes to the point that NEK Broadband must approve CV Fiber using existing ARPA funds held by CV Fiber in any further construction. I don't quite understand why something that has been solely transactions between CV Fiber and the towns and our CUDs are now being uh, torn apart and are being subjected to the approval by a new entity. Um, that that just, I, I, I didn't quite know how to process that. Yeah. Alan, Janelle, you cite, cite the, um, uh, uh, the uh, paragraph and section, section and paragraph? It's on page four of the preliminary agreement <clears throat> and it is under uh, 1.9.2, the title is CV Fiber ARPA funds. Okay. Go ahead, Janelle. Yeah. Thank you. Um, to provide clarification on that, no, it's not because CV Fiber will cease to exist. It's because during the merger discussions, uh, we're assessing one another's assets and liabilities, and we want to remain strong and predictable during these discussions. 
So it only makes sense that we would that we would not spend the rest of our three million dollars on construction and, and enter into the merged organization with zero dollars. So we are we are therefore putting every business decision that costs money in front of NEK so that there's predictability and so that our value remains strong, predictable, and constant throughout the merger discussions. Does that answer your question, Alan? Well, no, because my understanding is the transactions that were movement of money from towns to uh, our movement of ARPA funds from towns to CV fiber was a binding agreement that money would be the money that the towns were giving us would be used in their towns uh, for bettering their ability to get high speed Internet. And yeah. it seems to me we're losing we're losing the direct connection that's going to make sure that that's that happens. Not, that's that's not happening. We're, we're still um, held to our memorandums of understanding and we're still applying those funds to our installations. Krista, go ahead. Thanks. Um, thanks for your comments, Alan. So two things on that. One, um, that's referring to the VCBB ARPA funds. So those are the construction grant funds, not the town ARPA funds. Um, and that's where the, the primary piece is. So that reference to the, um, that reference that Janiel is making to the, the remaining funds. Now, ARPA is general, so it can apply to the town funds as well. I acknowledge that. Um, and the, the main piece here is that uh, NEK Broadband invested a considerable amount of time in finding um, a strategy that would enable CV Fiber to get to a um, to be able to meet its grant obligations with the funding that it had remaining, um, which was substantially less than would take under the original uh, grant application that went, went went in. And so we did that by modifying the. Um, addresses that would be uh, achieved and maintaining the same number of unserved addresses, but reducing the number of miles that would have to be constructed under that particular grant, which would enable us to do it. So the purpose of that was to make sure that the any use of those funds would be in um, alignment with the strategy uh, that was developed of how to reduce the uh, the construction grant liability. So that's that's where that um, paragraph comes from. Does that help, Alan? Uh, it helps. It sounds a bit <clears throat> a bit more complicated than I <clears throat> than I had had read it. <clears throat> it sounds like <clears throat> this is work that NRTC was doing for us, and they were the ones who should have been able to solve the problem rather than it being turned over to another CUD. But I, I, I don't know how the, how the designs have been, have been, have been done over the years. So I, I really can't ask any other questions about it. I would just say that, um, NRTC is not in a, unless they're specifically asked to solve that problem, they haven't been in that position because they don't manage your grants, right? They manage your construction. And they designed 1,071 miles for you out of the gate. And, you know, three to 400 of that is never going to get built, right? And so, there's because it's all it's served it's it's Northfield it's Roxbury so I just don't think that that is what their role is or if they have that level of expertise on what it takes to meet the requirements of the Vermont Community Broadband Board so all all we've done is to uh attempt to assist in how we all might get to success. And that amendment goes in front of the VCBB board in August for approval. It's been sort of 
you know, we've discussed it. We've gotten an amendment to extend the uh, grant until the end of until September 30th, 2026, uh, which helps us leverage other potential funding as well. Yeah. Oh, thanks for that explanation. Yep. Okay, next question, Alan. On page four uh, of the same document, can you tell the board if, quote, revised position descriptions, salary offers, and benefit packages were provided to all NEK broadband and CV fiber employees by July 7th for incorporation into the final merger proposal? If so, uh, where, where can we find the descriptions, offers, and packages? So the status of that is that there is uh, one offer on uh, the table and the formal document needs to be sent over. Um, I meant to have it over last week, but I've been focused on a pretty complicated business model. So I should have that over probably by the end of the day tomorrow. Um, the second one is a job description with um, an invitation to Try that job description on for the next, uh, you know, four to six weeks and or four weeks uh, and then uh, create a, a job offer from there if it's what works for both people. Um, and then Janiel and I have been uh, working together to identify uh, pathways and uh, what um, what makes sense uh, for her to work on inside of the organization and what that looks like. And we continue to do that and to meet regularly. Do you want to add anything to that, Janine? Uh, no, I concur with that. We are we actually have been working with all of our staff, um, CV Fiber and NEK staff Correct. together. And 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 yes, uh, the job descriptions will not just be for CV Fiber, but also for NEK. The entire organization needs to uh, be looked at and salaries and benefits need to be looked at holistically. So it's not just about the three CV Fiber employees, but how this organization is going to best function um, as, as a whole. So I think that's why it's it, it is taking up a bit longer than anticipated because we have been working together. We have been identifying different roles, but we want to make sure that it it works for the the new organization and it it, it is it is a complicated process. Right, and I understand that. I, what I'm worried about is we're losing time and the opportunities of either the executive, the CV Fiber Executive Committee, or the board to have much oversight of how this is turning out. And it seems as though this might be flying past us pretty quickly. And I just wanted people to realize that that the board probably is not gonna have very much to say about this. Um, and I, you know, I, I think we all probably realize that might be the, the end game, but it is something that's been an issue that has been important to us as an organization. Um, and I just wanted to make sure that we all feel we're doing the right thing by our employees. Okay, let me and move on. I think on. this is that's part of what Chris was um, talking about as well. So why don't I address uh, both of those um, at the same time? Um, so it. You're correct. I mean, this, the staffing decisions are in the purview of the of the executive director um, and uh, are made as part of the organization. So my process in making those decisions is about value, um, and it's about understanding um, the benefits the organization, what the organization needs. So that could be done in a number of ways. It might be done because it's something that we need and we need to have done and somebody's good at it. It might be that it replaces um, higher costs from consultants that we could otherwise um, not uh, you know, take in-house. Um, so there's there's a lot of different ways in which value is um, created and provided, um, and it's and it's also connected to uh, accountability um, and you know identifying what what folks need to accomplish and et cetera. So, I think um, you know we've been cognizant of both being um, with both our staff. Uh, and your staff uh, right sizing um, uh, salaries in some cases going up, uh, in some cases um, uh, staying the same or or having uh, the ability to reach um, for that. 
Um, from a benefits perspective, um, you know, the, the benefits are, um, uh, and there's a, re so I can provide you with the current revised document, which takes into account the recommendations from the joint um, HR group of both CB Fiber and um, board members and what we've put in the budget for next year and what those benefits um, reflect. And most of those uh, stay the same. There are some differences from um, point A to point B in terms of, you know, they're not exactly the same for either. Um, some things we move towards, some things that you do, some things that we um, met part way and some things that uh, remain the same. So I can supply you with a, um, red line of our benefits package. Um, from a uh, policy perspective, we intend to um, start with the, the CB fiber personnel policy. I think you guys did a really great job on that and that's robust. And um, we'll be adding pieces into that from our policy that weren't included. And the um, Janiel is um, the uh, lead on that uh, committee um, and is working on those uh, pieces with them. So, um, so that's, yeah, that's basically, you know, part of how we, we make the decisions on, on, on what happens. Jeremy, and it, <laughs> uh, Alan, let's give Jeremy a chance there. Oh, sure. I oh. can see that. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, so, Sorry, my brain just glitched and uh, it's been a long day. Um, I guess my question is um, from the from the CV fiber folks who are on this. I mean, it sounds like we as a as a board aren't going to be able to see uh, the documents because they're still in uh, in production. But um, I guess from the CV fiber folks, I'd, I'd be curious to know who is on that uh, working group for uh, for the HR decisions, um, and then to hear from the from those people, you know, do you think that it's fair? You know, because I, I you know, I, I trust the CV Fiber people, and I know you all reasonably well. I feel um, so. I guess if if you say that it's a good package and fair, then you know, I would go with that. So I just want to, uh, Alan, before I get back to you, I just want to add a note in here. Benefits package, HR policies are all the purview of the executive director going forward. Um, we don't have a lot of oversight on those. The reason we were doing those before was because we didn't have employees to be doing them. We had a policy committee because we didn't have employees to set policies. We ha and, and so, you know, we came up with what I consider personally, because I had a hand in it, a really wonderful HR policy, but it's not necessarily going to size up. It's not going to scale up easily. Um, and I've looked at the new policy. I've looked at some of the discussions. I haven't participated in the discussions because we needed other people in them. And I believe that there's been compromise on both sides. We are not the only ones making compromises here. They are making compromises too. Now I want to go back to, I want to talk to Christopher, if you've got still got good connection and Alan to address what, because you two were on the HR committee, correct? Uh, or working group? I was not, no. Chris, I, Christopher I am. was. Yeah. I am, and yes. One of the Johns, yeah. John Morris, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So John Morris and Christopher were. So if you want to address your feelings about that, that would, or what your thoughts on that were. So uh, the last meeting or two that we had, uh, I thought went pretty well, but there was one, uh, uh, two or three meetings ago um, in which all of the NEK folks uh, were on, <laughs> let's just say side A and all of the CB fiber folks were on side B. Um, and we were going back and forth and having a reasonable discussion. At the end, uh, um, I can't remember the woman who was the, her name that, she, that was basically running the meeting, but she said, all right, uh, well, we decided on A, and then she closed the, the discussion. And, and there was also a lot of talk, and, and, and Krista, I have a tremendous amount of respect for you, 
uh, and I love what you're doing. Um, but there was a lot in that meeting, there was a lot of discussion about, well, Krista wants it this way. And so that's how we're going to do it. Um, and it felt, and Krista, you weren't there, you know, for, for that. So I'm not pointing my finger at you or anything. It was, it just felt like, um, we were kind of along for the ride. Um, the last couple of meetings felt more collaborative. Um, and you know, I'd, I'd like to see what the, what that red line package is at the end. And I think that would probably make me feel more comfortable about it. Yeah. John Morris, do, do you have, do you have thoughts that you would like to share with us on that? Uh, I would. I agree that the that one meeting was uh, more contentious than the more recent ones have been. Uh, I think that uh, we're doing good work, and uh, there's still a bit of work to do. And unfortunately, I won't be able to attend the the next meeting, which is tomorrow. Uh, but I I I have confidence in in the process that's happening. Thank you, John. Okay, Alan, do you have other questions? Have we, yeah, what no, number I'm are we sorry. on? One, one last thing, just to Go ahead, Chris. scalable point that you made, Siobhan, I just so people understand that reference, um, you know, we, at the end of the day, when we bring um, the CV Fiber folks on, we'll be at 13 employees and we'll be um, potentially hiring additional installers. And so we have a, you know, we have a we have warehouse workers, we have installers, we have um, you know operations folks. Um, so there's a there's a um, you have to take those things into consideration when you're looking at what the what the benefits are. And I think that um, you know we provide gold uh, health care benefits um, and. Uh, and, and we've made some compromises in some of the other pieces. So I will send that um, document along um, and commit to making sure that happens this week, if not, if not by tomorrow night. Thank you. Go ahead, Alan. Yeah, the, uh, the, the question I had about all this was, has, has there been an outside management consultant working with the, the two different entities, uh, NEK and with CV Fiber, or has it just been uh, teams from those two parts of, of who we are? We, I think we have an HR consultant that we use, and I believe that you recently brought one in as well, right, Janelle? Yes, that is correct. Okay. And they're and they're advising the team, so it's not just a conversation between people who who are from the organizations. It's from people from outside as well. Correct. Great. Consultants. Thanks. Okay. Yeah, I've got I've got three more questions. I think they'll be faster than that one. Uh, oh. I'm now I'm now looking at the governing board bylaws, uh, which if you haven't found those, they're attached to the merger agreement document. Uh, the pages are renumbered when you get to that point, and they it's they start at one again. And on page one, under section three, organization in the governing board bylaws, can you explain this requirement? Quote, each such duly appointed delegate is required to sign a confidentiality agreement and to disclose any known potential conflicts, unquote. Sure. So... Um, the confidentiality agreement is effectively saying that what we provide to you that's confidential, you'll keep confidential and, and not share outside of the organization. And the conflict of interest is really just understanding, you know, do you work for CCI? Do you have a, a, um, a, an dun, dun, dun. interest? <laughs> um, that 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 kind of thing. So it's it's really just making sure it's it. You can have a conflict of interest. There's nothing wrong with you having a conflict of interest. Um, but uh, you know, we did have some Comcast uh, board members, and you know, they of their own accord said, you know, I don't think it's appropriate for me to be on this board, and I'm going to have my town find somebody else. Um, and we. <laughs> So it's it's really just understanding what what role so that we know when somebody may need to recuse themselves from a vote. I guess what my my question as I read that <clears throat> the other day was do we have the ability under statute uh, to restrict somebody as to what they can and can't say 
as long as they are abiding by public meeting and open document laws. <clears throat> this well, seems like it might be an intrusion further beyond where, where confidentiality might not be allowed. <clears throat> so I think um, S199 further made clear <clears throat> where the uh, sort of where the line is drawn between our function as a body politic and our function as a body corporate um, and really sort of you know, made quite clear that the items that reach that must be, um, you know, kept public have to do with governance and that business items may be kept confidential. And I think that that's important. We have certainly seen um, when the VCBB unintentionally posted our confidential grant agreements, we now have competition that is in those areas that had they not known that we were going there, I don't think they would have gone there um, since it was uh, directly started post that um, posting. In any event, the point is that um, I do think that business um, issues need to remain confidential and that is an expectation of our board members that they maintain that confidentiality um, and I do think it's important and a commitment of ours to maintain as much transparency as possible. Um, and that's why when I presented to the executive committee on, you know, both hiring and how we make construction and operational decisions around where we build and what, what gets done, um, that I tried to keep as much of that in public session as I could and then revert the remainder details into executive session. I guess what got my attention uh, 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 on this particular issue, Krista, was this is something that we actually <clears throat> dealt with <clears throat> within the first six months of our forming CV Fiber back in 2018. Uh, privacy confidentiality uh, uh, policy was something that was that we 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 found very quickly was important to have. So we came up with a policy that basically said what is required by state law uh, as to things you can disclose or, or may not or, or should not disclose. And we explained to our all of the delegates what that meant. We never thought that we that we would or should bind people to a confidentiality agreement that we had come up with that was any different than what already existed. So that's why when I saw this, I thought this is a little bit odd because it seems to me <clears throat> this has already been taken care of. But <clears throat> I understand where you're coming from on this. I just think it's someplace down the road somebody could possibly uh, uh, question whether a confidentiality agreement that the delegate was made to sign was binding uh, and whether it was actually a... a a proper thing to have done. Okay, let me move on to the I think next. That's worth thing. looking into, and I um, <clears throat> I welcome a future conversation on that. Okay. I also want to add, though, to that, that we routinely ask our vendors, um, partners, people we work with, consult with to to just to ha to sign non-disclosure agreements, because not every single thing in strategy we discuss is is um, public. So that is part of our business model is to, to have those agreements. Janiel, that's fine because they're not a delegate. This particular language requires only an appointed delegate to to sign a confidentiality agreement. So I think it's fine when people who are contractors and so forth are asked to sign that. Um, but I think for delegates, it's a different category. And that's that's what I was concerned about. Understood. OK, so page three under Section 15, which is the still, we're still with the governing board bylaws. Uh, under the, what's called the executive committee composition. Can you explain the roles of these two appointments if the committee chooses to make the appointments from within its ranks? Those are two brand area ambassadors, one from each brand area and quote, two digital equity champions. I'm just wondering wh so what the roles of those people are. Sure. So we have um, had an executive committee um, charter uh, working group that has been developing a revised set of bylaws um, that is simplified. 
under which um, neither of those roles exist. So, um, <laughs> so I probably don't need to, um, but that they what they have one of them has been replaced with is representation by county. So any county that has more than two people um, has a uh, two people <laughs> has more than two towns um, ha will have a representative on the board that is. Um, I'm sorry, on the executive committee that is selected by the members of that county. Um, so if somebody is not willing to run from that county, then the proposal is that they could select somebody else from a nearby town or or wherever. Um, and that helps make sure that we have uh, members from throughout the regional region of both districts. Um, and uh, digital equity was uh, simply because we feel fundamentally at our core that that's really important and want to make sure that we have people on the executive committee but that is not that that is no longer part of the proposed uh the current bylaws that are being drafted and um worked on okay great i got two more things and i'll try and go through these really fast on page three under section 15 executive committee composition uh, I noted the power granted the governing board to discuss, quote, all completed actions by the executive committee. The, quote, governing board shall affirm receipt and confirm no revision or alteration to such report or append comments. The action shall be subject to revisions or alterations by the governing board, provided that no acts or rights of third parties shall be affected by any such revision or alteration. So, my my question here was, uh, I think it's good to to state that the uh, governing board can affirm receipt and confirm uh, uh, revision, alteration, so forth, uh, and append comments. But I'm wondering about the the rights, the acts or rights of third parties uh, can't be altered. And I get this is kind of a this is a catch twenty two. But if the if the governing board were to overturn something that the executive committee and or the executive director um, uh, had done, they would not be able to also overturn something that somebody who was <clears throat> contracted to do, do something had already started, because it it's it puts third parties out of the out of the oversight. Am I, yep. am I reading this correctly? Yeah. So the way, yes. And so the, the purpose is that the executive committee is given the authority to act on behalf of the board. Um, the board then, I, mean, I know that I'm restating what you said, but I'm, but bear with me. The board then has, um, is given an action report of all activities taken by the executive committee and takes the vote outside of the consent agenda, right? This is not allowed to be part of the consent agenda. So it takes a vote. There's a opportunity for discussion and, and, um, and basically, uh, um, uh, affirms uh, the receipt and no con no no revision, and the purpose of appending comments and or the conversation around that is if the executive committee has done something that the um, governing board does not like, they basically have the opportunity to say we don't like this. This is not appropriate. <clears throat> we we're not. Um, you, you know, we're, we're providing comments on this and we want you to basically go fix it. I mean, that's basically what what is happening. And then the executive committee um, and the executive director uh, then need to basically renegotiate and go back and and change things to the degree that that they can if if that vote has been taken. Um, and so the point here, though, is that it is not an approval, right? You're not approving, and that's a very important distinction. The governing board is not approving and in the sense that it's not ratifying what has been done, because if that were to be the case, if there then 
then nothing that the executive committee did would be legally binding until it was approved by the governing board. And that would defeat the purpose of enabling the executive committee to move more swiftly operationally than the governing board would be would be able to do so. I will also note that part of this um, actually came as a result of requests from governing board members. Um, we had people that came and said, you know, there's 51 of us and it's really hard to keep up with how fast you're moving, how many things are going on. We had, you know, a lot of things going on to, to be sure. Um, and we needed to be able to make decisions more nimbly um, and more often. So we now meet um, twice a week as an executive committee. Um, recently, it's felt, I think it's been every week, um, but uh, that's the primary purpose. And so the, the, the point of that is to make sure that every vote that the executive committee takes is legally binding, but that the governing board has the opportunity to um, have its opinion voiced and heard and determine whether or not it, and to provide direction to the executive committee and or the executive director, uh, you know, to do something about it. Okay. I have one more thing, and it actually will riff off of this, this, this part that we were talking about before, uh, and that's sort of the idea of collectively working together and not having to always second guess every single step that's been taken. Um, I noticed that under under this section in the uh, in 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 the bylaws, the new bylaws, there's a final statement that says, "quote The executive committee shall strive for a consensus of all members by ensuring that all members have ample time to voice their opinions and any concerns." Unquote. I I have to say that I myself am really of two minds concerning consensus agreement versus tallied votes, and I think that's because. Consensus agreement is often an indication of top-down management rather than informed, engaged expression. And I find a goal of consensus management a somewhat odd statement to include in bylaws. So I was trying to figure out what the what the purpose of making that statement about the process of how decisions should be made, uh, how that ended up in the bylaws. Yeah, I appreciate that. Um uh, mm -hmm. I, I think that's shared by m many members of our board as well, and I'm, and I would ask uh, maybe Tom and Nick to to identify. I can't remember whether it's in the new version or not, but I'll give you the purpose of it being put in there in the beginning. Um, we were trying to, um, well, frankly, we were trying to address fear. Right? We were we we had been we were trying to address comments that came in about. Um, about, you know, being uh, afraid of being subsumed or, you know, what the ratios of participation were, those types of things. And so just trying to find uh, a way to help people understand that that their voice is going to be heard. Um, and, you know, we don't, I mean, I see this as 71 towns, not as like, I see us as 171, not as two, right? And, um, but it was put in there to try to allay fears. And there are many people that would prefer that it come out. I um, mean, it's pretty watered down just by having strive in it. Um, and I, and I think that there are many people that would be happy to take it out if that was, you know, what people wanted. Tom, do you want to speak to that? <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, um, we could potentially take it out and leave in something similar to what CV Fiber has, which is that um, you're not allowed to call the question that we're not going to stop debate if people still have things they want to say um, is one of our bylaws. Um, so we could incorporate that instead. Yeah, I like that. Is Are we good, Alan? Yeah, I am. And Krista, thank you very much. This has been informative. It's been, you've been straightforward. I really appreciate that. I'm sorry if I bored everybody else except you and me, but uh, <laughs> I, I, no. I, I just, uh, it was a good Alan, exercise to be told to read this stuff, so I did. 
You're I my hero, that. Alan. I appreciate you so much. Everything that you do for us is so appreciated because then I didn't have to read it as closely. I, I'm so just going to say, you. yeah, <laughs> you got your, you got yourself off the, off the hook. No, I've just read the documents so many times that I they, they just glide over my brain now. I right. don't even catch these things. You can't read them anymore because yeah. you've read them too much. Yeah, right, yeah. right. Okay. okay, Jeremy, you have your hand up. You said this is for after, so I guess it's for after. Yeah, well, I mean, it, it's on the, the same topic of the merger agreement. But um, first, I, I like the, um, the idea of you know, not calling to question rather than getting to consensus um, better personally, because I think that there are times when consensus isn't feasible, it isn't reasonable, you know, we need to make a decision and sometimes people are going to disagree about that. Um, but my question was um, on the merger agreement, uh, page 35 of the PDF, so that's the section 15 executive committee composition, there's a sentence in there that I read and I cannot parse it. Um, it says each county with one or more member shall be represented on the executive committee by at least one member from the county. I guess one does, does, does should that have read with it with more than one member town or I, I don't know what that is supposed to be saying. I, I can't. Remember. Yeah, it was, it was member town. Yeah, it's member town, and I do think that that one was also slightly modified, right, Tom? I don't actually have. Um, yeah, have we've have so. we've tweaked that one. Okay. <laughs> um, but ba basically, what it says is if is if the county has more than two voting towns, it has more than two member towns, then there then there it has one representation on at least you know at least one representation on the uh, executive committee. Okay, so that would imply that if there are, and I'm not sure of the of the memberships, but that there could be towns in um, that where there are counties where there are only one town, right? Uh, like that could, do not get a representative, right? So in out, so we have we have three full counties plus Lamoille County has the town of Wolcott in it, right? And you have two towns in the um, Orange, Orange. County, of, County of Orange. And so, um, I mean, it would it would be unfair to ask the representative Wolka to always be on the executive <laughs> committee. Um, so it was anyway. You always want to be able to have a choice. It, it was anyway. It was just a choice. We could have just said any town, and that would have you know. But and I think an, an important too. aspect of that idea is that the the representative is chosen by the people from that county. So it's not like I get to go say who the representative from Orange is going to be on the executive committee. That's only for the Orange delegates and alternates to come together and decide on their own. And it doesn't Do necessarily have to be somebody. It doesn't have to necessarily need to be somebody in Orange, but it needs to be a decision made by the people of Orange, essentially. Right. Sure. So, so Ted, one, Ted one, Siobhan didn't want to serve, they could appoint Chuck. You know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I, I guess what I would say to that, one thing that I would add in that case is to make sure that the people of Walcott have a, a voice is that, you know, if there's a county with only one town, then their vote is then their representative is drawn from this county and, and assigned the one that's geographically closest or something like that, so that they do have a voice in the composition of oh, the yeah, that's a good point. committee. That's a great point. Um, Tom, do you mind taking note of that? And so ba basically, it's it, just Jeremy. I'm sure I followed. Ba basically saying that the person from, from well, it's pretty much Wolcott. So basically saying that the <laughs> that that the representative from Wolcott can participate in the county of Orleans assignment, like that they get to gotcha. pick, have some say in who gets assigned, even if it's not from their county. And and they could potentially be assigned from by the Orleans representatives, I, I assume. Yeah. So yeah, so it could be just so that they have a voice. Adjoining, an adjoining county, any county that has fewer than two members participates with the adjoining county, something like that. We'll we'll riff on that later. Yep. David yeah, Haley. Or they can choose, or I don't know. Oh. Yeah. I'm sorry, Jeremy. Are you done? So, okay, so David Healy, go my, ahead. 
My comment has nothing to do with these documents, but it has to do with where are we with the financial modeling of the two districts? I am happy to say that I finally have a model. So I would be happy to give you a brief uh, drive through in executive session if anybody is interested, although I'm not sure how many of you are, but I am happy to do that. And I also have slides that demonstrate that show the the difference be with a merger and without a merger, um, as well as the potential impact on ARPU over time, um, average retail price per unit. Um, so I'm happy to uh, to dig into that. It is it is very exciting. <laughs> if you're <laughs> if you're if you're me. <laughs> All right. Well, so that's geek. that's an executive committee's question. Chuck Burt. Yeah. Um, in reviewing the agreement, there was a section about uh, outstanding agreements that the two organizations mm -hmm. hold, um, in particular vendor agreements. And uh, I was just curious, uh, and Olivia, you may know the answer to this best. Uh, Vickery Hill is not listed. Do we just not have an agreement with them? Or are they just kind of doing work for us on an ad hoc basis? No, we uh, have an we do have an agreement with Vickery Hill. It's um it is it is um kind of it is kind of ad hoc more lately. They've taken sort of a back seat, but they did a lot more work in the beginning with crowd fiber and they've really cut back significantly. So we haven't been doing as much work with them recently. Yeah. Uh, I was just curious if if they should be named in that list of active agreements if we do indeed have an active agreement with them. Um, for for Krista's reference, uh, they're a development group that did a lot of our crowd fiber development. Um, very very good group, local to me, and and we had a great working relationship between them and the communications committee. Yeah, we could we could um, add Vickery Hill if there's anybody else that we want to add. We could you know I mean people who might resurface. Look at that. Okay. I, I think it's it's. I mean, unless uh, NEK Broadband has, um, you know, development group for crowd fiber development that they, you know, that is preferred to come forward for whatever reason. The fact that they are a development group that understands how to do crowd fiber development and does it for multiple CUDs, I think, makes them an asset that we should definitely try to keep engaged. Okay, Jeremy Matt. Um, so yeah, I was just going to say that with regards to the financial model, I would be curious to see it. Um, although I don't know if other people like Tom are melting now that his drone battery is dying, um, and if that's the case, <laughs> then you know I, I would be okay with skipping it. Um, but it, if we are going to skip it, I, I you know I'd like at least a high level summary of of what the um, what the main takeaways are. I agree. OK, so I want to I want to point out it is 730. We still have a vote to have and we need to get into executive session if we're going to look at these slides. So do I have a motion to go into executive session? Remember, we used to go to nine o'clock. You remember when we had three hour meetings? So we're still we're still good. We're still fine. Jeremy, go ahead. Well, I mean, I, I mean that that is a very good point, though, that we are close to quorum. So, if anyone is, you know, thinking that they might potentially drop off, yeah. we need to have the vote rather than go into executive session. So, I just right. wanted to. Right. So, I guess I the like real that. question here is, given that several people from CV Fiber and David Mannix has been working very hard on this financial model. And we have been assured by them that we're doing really, that this is really good work and it's gonna, it's a positive, it's a thumbs up kind of a thing. Is this something that you need to see in order to cast your vote tonight? David Healy, go ahead. I just want to know if it's positive or not. That's all. I don't care about the details. Yeah. Yeah. Chris has given us two thumbs up and a smile. That seems really positive. Um, and Chuck Burt. Um, I, I think I would echo uh, Jeremy's sentiment of I'd at least love to see the kind of takeaways, the summary. 
Um, okay. it, it, you know, I don't think going into the weeds of a financial model uh, in a group of this size is is a particularly good use of time. Uh, but a summary would be great. Okay, Ted Barnett. I'm also wondering in terms of having the vote, right? Because there's going to be another vote or checkpoint in August, and a lot of discussion around nits and details. This could also be presented at the finance finance committee. Um, and then followed back up in August if we have our affirmative, like, right, like if we agree and then refine our agreement over certain points. Go ahead, Krista. Um, yeah, happy to do it at any time. Um, I do want to just really emphasize, like, this, and I know it's been said, but this really should be considered the off ramp. There's a tremendous amount of work that needs to be done, and we need to focus on on bead, on our potential partnerships and cooperation things. And um, we just have a lot going on that needs to focus on. And so when this vote gets taken and our vote gets taken on Thursday, um, we are pivoting so that we're, you know, fully integrating staff even more than we have. We're beginning our financial integration processes where we've, you know, starting the operational integration processes. Some of that is started, but it's really sort of started from a planning perspective. And so I just want to be um, really clear that, that if you're uncomfortable, then you shouldn't vote yes. Um, and if, and, and hopefully we've, we've been able to, uh, you know, address any any questions or or thoughts. Um, and definitely, there's you know always continued input. Like I I want to just say from my perspective as an executive director, I really value the input of our board members. I frequently get pushback of like, hey, why are we doing this? What about this? And you know those perspectives are hugely important to me because it's a wealth of knowledge and experience from across the region, from across different professions and perspectives um, that's super important. So I continue to, you know, I'm always take your input and um, and happy to do an entire session on the model and to do a try to be brief um, tonight if you'd like. Okay, we're going to go ahead and try and do an executive session, but RD, do you have a question that you want to ask right now, or do you want to ask it at executive session? No, I want to ask it right now. What, go ahead. Um, were we to vote now, exactly what would be we be voting on, Siobhan? We will be voting on continuing the merger process and enmeshing our organizations. So uh, we're not voting on this, on the document. We're well, you, you, you voted on the document on May 30th, right? Okay. So that was the first vote. The second legal vote under the statute is August 15th. Right. For the August 15th um, vote, you will receive a revised um it will, well, instead of having a preliminary merger plan, you will have a final merger plan. The final merger plan will have, um, you know, the final revision of the executive committee charter and how we plan to get to what number of executive committee members. It will include um, the financial integration plan and, and the status of where it is, as well as the operational integration plan. It will include the date of the first organizational meeting. Um, of the organization, which will be within 90 days of the first thing. So, so the final um, plan will have, you know, the sort of the operational integration pieces, as well as the governance integration pieces dialed in more um, permanently than the preliminary merger plan did. Understood. So in, in essence, what a vote now is, is a vote in principle. It's it's a vote in principle with an understanding that this is oh. this is really your off-ramp, right? Like, yes, technically you have an off-ramp on August 15th, but you will be doing substantial harm to your CUD if you vote yes today and no on August 15th. It will, that, that's what we're saying. Yeah. I'm just, I'm, I'm just, I'm, yeah, I'm just interested in, to be, uh, to be clear, the the wording of what motion would be offered now if we were to vote now. 
So okay, so Jeremy this is here. not a this yeah. is not a motion. I'm just going to tell you what we've got as a draft right now that may possibly be amended later per, per discussion. Motion to approve continuation of the merger process with the understanding that staff is going to proceed as if we are merging in order to work on integration, bead preparation, partnerships, negotiations, and other important business. A yes vote indicates that you will be present and voting yes at the final vote on August 15th, barring the presentation of new information. Uh, I'm happy to receive more information tonight, but I'm prepared to vote yes now. Thank you, RD. All right, Jeremy, can you go ahead, please? Yeah, move that we find that holding discussion of financial modeling is related to the merger with NEK, uh, the potential merger with NEK, rather, uh, would put CB Fiber at substantial competitive disadvantage in accordance with 1 VSA Section 313A. Second. Okay. Motion made by Jeremy, seconded by Chuck. Do I have any opposition to the motion? I am not seeing any opposition. Do I have any uh, abstentions from the motion? Motion passes. Jeremy, second half. Uh, whereas the executive committee has found that discussion of financial modeling is related to the potential merger with NEK in open session would put CV Fiber at a competitive disadvantage. Move that we enter executive session to discuss these topics and that CV Fiber board members, alternates, staff, consultants, members of the NEK Governing Board and Krista Schutt are invited into the executive session as they have information that is needed in accordance with 1 VSA Section 313A1B. Do I have a second? Second. Motion made by Jeremy Matt, seconded by Chuck Burt. Jeremy, you have the both motions language in the chat. Just paste it. Chuck, will you stop recording, please? Oh, well, I, have to take the vote. Vote. I have to take the vote. You're right. I have to take the vote. Yep. Is there and, anybody and then, opposed and then, to the motion? And then for the recording, if you wouldn't mind stating the time that we're going into uh, yes. executive session, then I'll stop yes, the recording. Yes, sir. Do I have any opposed to the motion? I always forget this part. Any abstentions? Motion passes. The time is 7.40 p.m. We are going into executive session. Chuck, will you please stop the recording?